Looking to get into the digital world of FPV? Well, today we're going to be checking out this digital option from Emacs. G'day, you absolute legend. Stu from UAV Futures here, and today we're going to be talking about some digital FPV for our first video of 2023. And what we've got here is the new addition from Emacs. It's the Transporter Number no. 2s their HD Zero version. Now, before we put this on the bench and look at the text and the specs and show you some flight footage, I wanna give a quick little mention of why you might choose a goggle like this. Some benefits uh, with different systems because getting the right system when it comes to FPV is absolutely critical. We've got analog systems, we've got a couple of different digital systems, whether you go Walksnail, DJI, HD Zero, there is a whole different bunch out there and they are not really compatible with each other. So you need to choose one that you think is gonna be best for you and hopefully today's video is going to give you a little bit more information to make that decision as we look further in depth at the transporter v2s now all in all they're a box goggle which is a kind of a pleasant surprise in the digital space because most of them are sort of goggles like this this is what i would traditionally call a fat shark style goggle but this is a box goggle here the price point i'm going to link a couple of different things down below and it's sort of a, dare I say, and I'm using quotation marks, a better value uh, goggle, because look, it's still a pretty penny. It's about 230 bucks. Check some links down below. Maybe they're gonna be cheaper, depending on which one that you look at at the time this video is live. But also, when you look at DJI and some of the other goggles out there, it can be very, very expensive uh, on some of those other systems as well. So it's a pretty good price if you wanna get into digital and the benefits that that offers. And it also offers some cons as well. So on the bench, let's have a quick look at this bad boy, of course. Uh, it has a detachable screen. You see me taking this off and on all the time, which is great if you're gonna do some ride-alongs or something, maybe doing some diagnostics problem diagnosis on the bench or something it's nice you could uh, it's got a little swivel or a little thread in the bottom as well if you want to attach it to a little stand so great job there Emacs uh, we're going to talk about the screen a bit more in detail in a minute but you can see we've got this is the part that uh, sits on your face right here it's a telescopic goggle which means you can extend it I have to have mine at, at the maximum range because that just makes it easier for me to focus um, and it's relatively light as well now it is held on there by four separate ma magnets it doesn't fall off I don't think so it's uh, not the best motion to be doing on the internet, but however, it's uh, it's pretty sturdy once it's on there. It's got no, not too much light leakage. It's got a big, nice gap there for my nose. Uh, so there we go. So it doesn't feel like it's cramping anything or it doesn't pinch my skin or anything like that. The uh, foam padding around the outside is pretty standard, I would say. Nothing too special. Uh, all in all, a pretty decent uh, little, I would say, would say housing. And it folds up nicely when you want to put it away as well. Now, the field of view isn't massive or anything like that, but the real star of the show is this bad boy right here. So let's turn this thing on. This is their little screen, and I love that you can take it out of the headset case. I think that's fantastic. Hopefully, this is going to turn on. I can always tell oh, I've got to hold the button in, unless I've run it flat because I have been flying this a, a little bit. All right, hold it down for about five seconds. There we go. This is Emacs's screen right here. Let me get this drone. We're gonna be flying around. This is their five inch Apex as well. Let me just power this up if I can find, uh... Whew, maybe I'm gonna to have to use this battery. This battery's probably flat because I need a little adapter right here. So we're gonna put this on here. Hopefully it's gonna pick this drone up if the battery's not too flat. There we go. And I, what I do wanna say is, I don't know if this is gonna uh, come through, the picture, that's what a lot of people are concerned about, is pretty clear. It's probably the best way to describe it is the best analog video that you've ever seen. Do I think this is as clear as some DJI footage, which I might be able to put on the screen and I'll show you some side-by-sides a little bit later as well? No, but it's also coming in significantly cheaper than some of those other systems. So you can see uh, right here, we've got the picture on here. It's looking all good. It's got your standard menus. You can do an auto search function if you hold the little up button um, for a little while. I don't recommend that. Please manually select your channel. I'm flying around on R1 for me. And we're gonna be talking about the reception in a little bit as well. When we put this through its paces, I'm gonna be flying it out over Farmer Joe's fields, flying it around the house. Um, 
and it's okay. Like there's some things I like about it and some things I don't like about it. So look, that's the boring stuff out of the way. Let's help make your mind up and finding out, is this a good solution for you? Do you think it's worth the price? Would you get one with nothing better than some flight footage and some commentary? Then we'll wrap it up at the end of the video uh, and talk about some things I might like to change. Of course, it's got a big fan on the back and I would say the runtime on this bad boy is about an hour. So I did run mine flat for the first time I was flying it. It went 45 minutes, but I left it on all the time. And I don't know if that was fully charged. That was sort of when I got it out of the box. But usually, um, you're probably going to be looking around an hour's worth of flight time. It records the DVR, of course, um, and you can place back some DVR on here. But one thing I would like to say is you have this little part right here, so you can also power it. Hopefully that's in shot. Uh, you can power it by an external USB device. So uh, if you have a little battery pack or something, maybe charging your phone off one of them, they're pretty common nowadays. You're out in the field, you're doing a big flying session, you're heading out with your mates, you wanna have more than an hour's worth of flight time uh, across all your quads on your goggles. This, you can power it off a little external unit as well. So there it is on the bench. Let's do it, let's go have some fun uh, and then come back to the video and talk about some things I'd like to change, some things I really like and find out if it's right for you. So let's go fly around, show you some footage of the Apex recorded on this bad boy in three, two, one. <laughs> Radio, here we are flying around, a bit of flight footage around the UAV Futures farm. Of course, the chickens run around, all this sort of stuff. But let's take it out, go for it. We're flying around with the Emax Apex as well, which is an extremely lightweight little five inch ripper. A lot of fun with some good flight times. However, let's talk about the goggles a little bit more while we exercise Charlie the dog running around doing some stuff. So, straight off the bat, I think that this is for me better than analog, but when it comes to digital, it's not as good as some of the DJI's. I'm just gonna say that straight off the bat. We'll do a comparison in a little bit as well because the breakup for me when it comes to this is a little bit harder uh, to see through or to fly through. So you know, I've been doing FPV for five, six, seven years. I don't know, I've been doing FPV for a long time and I am more than used to the snow. I used to call it snow or static that you're flying through. But the breakup that you see on this, on the HD Zero, it's, it's uh, it's a little bit more distracting to me. Maybe it's because I'm not used to it. It wasn't bad, and I think the picture when it is locked in and like it looks absolutely stunning, like some of the best analog you've ever seen. Maybe even a little bit better. Um, it's just the breakup is sort of what does it for me. Now, in a moment, we're going to go flying around the back, and you can see we're about to lose reception. We also do this. Uh, when we're about to fly over, not lose total reception, but it can be a little bit tricky to fly through. And when we fly over Farmer Joe's field down here as well, if you watch the reception up in the top right hand corner, um, that's when it can be a little bit tricky as well. And it made me feel unsafe if you're gonna be pushing this thing in long range uh, or some other bit sketchier uh, environments or anything like that. As far as how the goggles on my face, they were comfy. Um, I did get a tiny little bit of eye strain. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm not used to it, but I get that with most goggles. I would say 99% of goggles out there that aren't fat shark style. I definitely get some strain. Um, but the price is something that you really can't shake a stick at. I don't know if that's a common saying. For the price, they're pretty decent. A good entry digital goggle, I would say, to get people into the hobby. You can use the screen, take it for ride-alongs and things like that. Um, that I just got to say, well done, Emacs. I think uh, again, pretty solid product, pretty decent, pretty decent uh, price point. Um, with some things that I'd like to change, like you know, better, better video or anything like that. But of course, that's going to cost a lot more money. And here we are with some chickens. At the end, they were all very excited to come and see, uh, see what it had crashed in the garden. Now, uh, here's just a little comparison for those people who are interested. This is some DJI footage. Now, this is a much more expensive uh, digital FPV system, but you can notice the clarity, I think, in the image is that it's a lot sharper uh, when I'm flying around here. Of course, this is a different day, totally different recording, but I just thought I'd throw this in there. So you can, look, there still is a little bit of smearing and stuff that you can see, but it's a very different image to one you're getting through the HD um, Zero digital system. Alrighty, so there it is. There was the flight footage of the Apex and recording with some DVR on the new Transporter HD Zero goggles from Emacs. Let's talk about things I like. So the picture looks fantastic, as you'd sort of expect. The way I describe it is it's the best, best analog you've ever seen. We did get some okay distance. We're flying around, of course, on 25 milliwatts, you know, but I wasn't penetrating too much through some thick trees or anything like that. And the little antenna on here, I felt like if I was flying away 
from myself uh, and it was getting blocked, the reception was getting a little bit sketchy. So that was freaking me out a little bit there. Once you turn around, of course, the picture became a lot clearer. So you've got to be mindful of your environment. Is it going to be the right video system for me? Well, it's a really hard sell. Like, I mean, if you wanted to put your glasses in here, it's going to be a very, very tight fit because they are a relatively small looking goggle. The price point is fantastic. Uh, I liked the DVR. It does look really good. Um, but of course, if I had to choose, I'd be flying around on my DJI goggles, but they're a lot more expensive. The whole system is going to cost a lot more. So uh, it really comes down to a comparative price point. And do I think that these goggles work well for the 240 bucks? Yeah, I think they're great. Some things I didn't like, some things I would like to change, however, would be maybe, look, it it's, is tricky to get your glasses in here, which is a big benefit of box goggles for people who like glasses or need glasses, I should say. Does anybody actually like uh, wearing glasses? One problem I did have with this, and I don't know if this can be updated in some of the firmware updates, because you simply, you've got a little, there's a cable. Well, turns out I lost the cable. It's somewhere here in the studio, but you can just simply plug in this little port right here and that's gonna update it if you plug it uh, into your receiver right here. So you can, sorry, into your unit in your drone. So if you wanna do some updates. But one thing that kind of bugged me when I was flying around, I know we had that funny flight and the chickens and I stacked it and all that sort of stuff, but I had an awesome flight before. And I know of course, this is like the story, the one that got away. I did an awesome flight with some, I guess, some constant power loops through that uh, veggie patch up the back. And then for some reason, it didn't record it. So it had the first part until I armed the quad and I don't know what was going on, but then it just didn't record. So that part was a little bit frustrating. Whether the file got corrupted or something, um, that might be something we need to investigate a little bit as well. So the recording on the one flight I really did want to show you uh, it didn't record. So that part was a little bit frustrating. Yeah, but all in all, look, a pretty solid goggle. Well done, Emacs. What do you guys think about it? Would you get this? Do you think this is the right price point for you? Because for that price coming in at digital, it's got a lot to offer. And a big plus as well is you've got a lot of potential for upgrades and firmware and better development coming along in the future. So all in all, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. I quite liked the uh, Apex Quad as well. Very, very fun. A little light quad, although I do have to get some better battery adapters or maybe turn this to an XD60. We're going to find out on that. Subscribe for more FPV related content. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I want to say a big shout out to all those people cold up in the Northern Hemisphere. I am absolutely melting here. So um, I had to go sit in front of the aircon before I came and filmed this video. And a huge shout out to the RS7 driver. Look, we got the sign up. Give me some love. Share some love for that as well. So. Thank you so much. That is for the first video of 2023. Uh, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Be kind to each other, but most importantly, be kind to yourself because you are awesome. Enjoy this hobby. It's fantastic. Put some comments down below. Check them out if you're interested. And as always, happy flying.